Robert Bellarmine, he was a Jesuit who was one of the most important figures of the Catholic Counter-Reformation of the 16th and 17th centuries. And he was particularly important for uh, intellectually defending uh, the faith against uh, criticisms uh, that Protestants were making towards it at the time. And so he, he joined the Jesuits at a young age and was known to have a, a brilliant and encyclopedic mind. And he eventually became a renowned theologian who taught uh, controversial theology at the Roman College. And um, as the name suggests, controversial theology, it, it dealt with uh, the topics that were in controversy in, in theology and in Christianity in the day. And during Bellarmine's time, which was the one of the Protestant Reformation, um, the Catholic Counter-Reformation. <music> Bellarmine's job as a controversial theologian was to explain the Catholic position on a topic and then explain uh, the Protestant position on the same topic and then to explain why the Catholic position holds true uh, against the Protestant one. And it, it's often said that uh, Protestants during his day would read his work and uh, say that he expressed more clearly uh, their position than, than even they could, um, which I think goes to show uh, how, that he was not a man who tried to caricature his opponents. He wanted to give them a fair reading, um, even if uh, he did not agree with them, um, which I think just goes to show that he had uh, integrity of character behind him. And it's something to be admired. But besides being a uh, theologian and a professor, um, he also served uh, the Jesuits as a spiritual director to um, Jesuit novices in Rome, and he also served as a provincial. And then he served the larger church eventually as a, as a bishop. He was consecrated as a bishop, and he was also eventually made a cardinal, um, an honor which was, uh, he tried to refuse out of humility, but he eventually uh, accepted it out of the obedience to the Pope. While he was still a cardinal, he, he still lived uh, the life of simplicity and humility um, and poverty that he had lived uh, according to his Jesuit charism. And overall, during his lifetime, he was known to be a, a saintly and holy figure. Um, for instance, on his deathbed, he had a line of um, cardinals and, and bishops who went up to him and asked him to, to pray for them when, they, when he got to heaven. So... Uh, he was known to be a holy guy, and um, he was also a man of uh, who always tried to bring his spiritual knowledge and, and learning uh, to his people, uh, to the people who were entrusted in his care as a bishop and as a cardinal. Um, he uh, wanted to make uh, his learning relevant to others and help it affect their spiritual life. And so I think to use a, a phrase of Pope Francis, he was... Uh, a shepherd, you could say, who smelled like his sheep. Um, he was trying to be with the people and, and help them, help them grow in holiness through his knowledge. And one of the main ways that he did this was through writing spiritual works uh, for the laity. And one of the uh, best instances of this is his On the Eternal Happiness of the Saints. Mm -hmm.